Greetings friends, David Marks here with a new video tutorial for those of you who are working with the cloud-based type of Adobe Lightroom. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the export options that are available inside of Adobe Lightroom and briefly explain when you might use each type of export file format. To be clear, the word export in this context means to save a copy. Export here means to create a new file, possibly in a new file format, for use outside of your Lightroom library. Let me jump into Adobe Lightroom and let's get started. Before we get deep into the details about each different file format, let me just make sure you're clear on the basic concept here. Whenever you find an image that you want to share with friends or use in a project that takes place outside of Lightroom, then you can invoke the export command to make a copy of your photo. Using export will not alter your original image, the file that you see here inside of your Lightroom library in any way. If I click on this image, for example, and then I go up to the file export command, a new window appears. In this window, all of the choices that we need to make are over here on the right side of the screen. The most important option here is the one that says file type. When you click here, you'll see a list of the file formats that you can use for your new copy. For our first example, let's focus on the options that we'll get if I choose the JPEG file format. Now, there are a number of common scenarios where it makes sense to use JPEG for your export file format. The most common scenario, the one that I bet you're going to use 90% of the time, is when you want to prepare a copy of your photo for email. When we're dealing with email, the images that we're going to send out are meant to be small and relatively low quality. When I'm sending someone an email, I want the photo that they receive to look good on their screen, but I don't need to send them a large enough file to print. Now, I could click here and pick Adobe's small JPEG preset. And if I did this, Lightroom would automatically limit the pixel dimension of the copy to about 2,048 pixels on the long edge. In my opinion though, that setting is still too large for the files that I like to send via email. So to make an even smaller file, I'm going to click here where it says dimensions. Then I'm going to choose the one that says custom. Next, I'm going to fill in 1,200 pixels for the long edge. Just so you know, setting the length of the long edge here tells Lightroom to automatically calculate the other dimension, the shorter side of the rectangle, for you. Now, for an uncropped image from a DSLR photo like this one, this means that Lightroom will create a 1,200 pixel across by 800 pixel tall image, which is just the right size, in my opinion, for this kind of project. Next, I'm going to use a bit of lossy compression to further reduce my file size. For email, I generally set this one down to about 70%. If you use too much compression, then your images will look chunky. But when used properly, it can dramatically reduce our file sizes without producing noticeable artifacts. At this point, I've made all the changes that I really need to make for an email-ready image. But there are a couple of bonus features hiding down here, further down the panel. One option that lots of photographers want is a visible watermark a stamp that puts my name over one corner of the image. Adobe has made adding this kind of marking easy. All I have to do is click here on this tiny little box beside the words include watermark. Once I do that, you'll see that my name and a copyright symbol appear down there in the bottom left-hand corner. If I wanted this visible stamp in a different place over my image, or if I wanted to change the font size, then all I have to do is tap here on this little gear. When I do that, the watermark panel will open. Now, if you want the stamp to say something else, you could type in new words up here. You can change the font, the style, all of that stuff, of course. But it's these buttons down here that change the placement of your watermark. Finally, you can use all of these sliders down here for even more control over specific attributes, like the size of your text overlay or its opacity. At this time, in the summer of 2020, there isn't a way to use a logo instead of words for your watermark, but hopefully Adobe will add that option in soon. For my purposes though, this simple watermark looks just fine. So I'm gonna tap on the done button up here at the top of the screen. And now everything looks good to me. So I'm gonna tap on the blue export one photo button at the very top. When I do this, another window will appear. In this window, Lightroom wants to know where it should put my new email sized copy. To make life easy, I'm going to choose my computer's desktop. Now, a little progress bar will run across the top left of the screen, and when I minimize Lightroom, my new image is sitting out here on the desktop. At this point, all that I would need to do is to hop over to my email program 
and attach this one to send it to a friend. I'm sure that you have the email part itself under control though. So let's return to Lightroom and talk about another common use for the JPEG output file format. This time, let's say that I want to use Lightroom to prepare a copy of my image so that I can send the copy to a photo lab for professional printing. If you're thinking of sending a file out to a photo lab, you could just jump right into the export window. But if I were you, I would add an additional step and do a little thinking. If you're working with images like mine, with images that were shot with a DSLR camera, then your photos were probably created using a two to three shaped rectangle. The problem is that most of the common print sizes that we're used to ordering, like five by seven, eight by 10, and 11 by 14, do not match up with an image that was captured with a two to three ratio. Let me show you what I mean by opening up Lightroom's crop tool. For DSLR photos, when I click back and forth between the original ratio and the two to three ratio, you'll notice that nothing changes. I don't need to make any changes at all in here as long as the physical dimensions of the print that I want to order also match a two to three rectangle. So print sizes like four by six, eight by 12, and 20 by 30 are all perfect matches. But if I want to order an eight by 10 inch print, then something needs to be cropped off here. As you can see, the minute that I choose the eight by 10 ratio, the crop frame moves in and I can no longer fit the entire image inside of this rectangle. If you skip setting the crop yourself before sending your files to a photo lab, then someone at the lab will decide for you which parts of the image they think should be cut away. I like my photo lab, but the odds that they'll pick the right crop for me every time are pretty slim. So if I want an eight by 10, I need to come in here first and adjust the crop however I see fit. When I'm happy with the crop, I can close that panel and then I can go file, export again. I'm gonna stick with the JPEG file format this time, but I'm gonna change the dimensions here to the one that says full size. Next, for photo lab printing, I'm gonna set the quality to something like 100%. Next, I'm gonna uncheck that include watermark option since I don't want my name written across the front of my printed image. Finally, I'm gonna make one other very minor adjustment down here. For most photo labs, it's a good idea to set the output sharpening to something like glossy paper and the amount to standard. If you skip this sharpening step, I doubt it would cause you too much trouble, but it's so easy, why not? Anyway, at this point, I'll tap on the blue export button at the top. Again, I'll put it on the desktop. Our progress bar will run across. And now here's the file ready to go for photo lab printing. Now, the website or the software that you use to actually order prints from your lab, that's gonna differ from company to company. But fortunately, the export process from Lightroom is pretty much the same for every image. If it were me, the last thing that I would do here is to use the new versions feature to save this crop. In here, I would click versions and then the little plus, and I would call this one say eight by 10. The cool thing about versions is that now I could set a new crop or even set it back to its original. And then if I need this later, I can just open up the versions panel and click on eight by 10 again to return to that look. Okay, now we've covered the two most common uses for the JPEG export options. So let's talk about the rare cases where I might use some of those other file formats. The next option that I wanna cover is TIFF. I rarely use the TIFF file format, but it's in here so that you can export the highest quality version possible of your images using a common pixel-based file format. If you're gonna work on this image using a third-party application, meaning some program other than Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop, then I would go to the export dialog. The keyboard shortcut for export, by the way, is Shift and Control and the letter E on a PC, or Shift, Command, and the letter E on a Mac. In here, for TIFF, change the file format, and then we get a whole new set of options. For maximum quality, I would set things up this way. With things set this way, the file that I'm about to export will be massive. But this kind of giant file is ideal if I'm gonna work with a plugin or another program from a company like On One, Topaz, or the Nick family of plugins. If I were interested in working with Silver Effects from Nick, for example, which is my favorite black and white conversion software, then I could right click on this file, 
and choose to open it into the Silver Effects application. When Nick opens, I'm going to pick one of my favorite presets, and then I'm just going to hit save here because I have far more detailed tutorials elsewhere on Silver Effects. But the point of this demo is to show you that now I will have the absolute highest quality file possible sitting out there on my desktop. And that if I wanted to, I could then import this file back into my Lightroom library. Something like this, where you need a maximum quality version for use in some other program, is the only time that I can think of when you're likely to use the export as TIFF option. This brings us to our second to last scenario. I don't think this is a common activity, but if you wanted a true copy of your image, then you can hop into the export dialog and choose the original and settings option. When you choose this file format, Lightroom will generate an exact copy of whatever you had for you. Be aware though, that when Adobe says original here, they mean a truly unaltered version of whatever your camera gave you. So don't expect any of the work that you've done with Lightroom's editing tools to show up in this copy. The only place where I find this option useful though, is when I want to export a copy of one of my RAW files and then work on it using some other brand of RAW converter. If I wanted to, I could open this one into the On One Photo RAW program, for example, if I thought that that company's software might do a better job than Lightroom with this particular image. Talking about RAW files brings us to our final type of export. There's one scenario, and only one scenario that I can think of, where the export as DNG option makes sense. Only when I want to export a RAW file, and I want to ensure that all of the changes that I added here inside of Lightroom won't get lost, does the export as DNG option make sense? When I pick this choice, there really are no other options to pick in here. And exporting a DNG will create a full resolution RAW file for you using Adobe's open source DNG file format. I don't use this one very often, but if you have downloaded any of my example images, to work on while playing along with one of my tutorials, then you've seen this use for DNG in action. When I need to give raw images to my students, and when I want them to be able to build upon the improvements that I've already made for them inside of Lightroom, then the DNG file format is a great option. Now you've seen how each of the export options that we have in Adobe Lightroom differs, and hopefully you understand which one makes sense for the type of project that you want to do next. I suspect that you're going to use the export as JPEG option 99% of the time, but now you know what these other file formats can do for you should you ever need them. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you learned something today, then please hit the subscribe button and leave us a like or a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.